The Queen Mary is the last survivor of the golden age of ocean liners. This is her story, intimately told by some of the many millions of people whose lives she touched and changed forever. Built with the blood and sweat of the master craftsmen of the Clydebank shipyards, she helped drag a nation from the depths of the Great Depression and set sail as a symbol of new hope and a better future. The great day has arrived for the maiden voyage of the Queen Mary. Movie stars, politicians and royalty crossed the Atlantic luxuriously cocooned in a floating palace. During the performance, I was sliding back and forth and chances are, cause I wear a silly grin and I didn't have to move, the boat moved for me. <laughs> In 1926, the famous British shipping line Cunard made the decision to design a ship that was longer, bigger, and faster than any vessel ever built before. She would be the height of luxury, a veritable city afloat. When it was finally time for the build, there was really only one place in the world with the skills and craftsmen to construct such a monumental feat of engineering. Scotland's illustrious River Clyde was the number one shipbuilding river in the world with upwards of 40 shipyards on its banks. In 1930, at the height of the Great Depression, massive pieces of metal began to arrive at the famous John Brown shipyard. The promise of work for thousands of men was a welcome relief to the misery of the times, and by the end of the year, the keel was laid on Clyde Bank. The as yet nameless ship was known simply as job number 534. This was the beginning of one of the greatest movement of troops in history. The Queen Mary had been refitted to carry whole divisions at a time. But the Atlantic Ocean was a hazardous place. Realizing her troop-carrying potential, Hitler had offered a huge bounty and the Iron Cross, Germany's highest honor, to any U-boat captain that could sink the Queen Mary. But she was faster than all of them and would zigzag across the Atlantic to throw her pursuers off course. 